Hello, podcast listeners. This is your host with the most, JJ. I'm aiming to meet every single person on the world, and we can check some more names off of that list. Episode number two of our sit down with Dr. Greg Carlson's classic Concordia. You're going to meet some fine new people here and maybe even get some new podcasts to listen to. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of JJ Meets World. And by the way, if you'd like to help support our podcast, visit jjmeetsworld.com where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some killer swag at our merch shop, or click the link to Apple Podcast and give us a five-star review. One, two, three, four. JJ Gordon, sort of like that Indiana Jones in that he's always sniffing out his next adventure. Yes, he is. He's always interviewing guests so he can have them on his show and they can talk about pop culture, arts, and leisure. JJ has his flag unfurled and he likes his french fries curled and he's fun and then he twirls as he goes to meet the world. He will march into the rain even if his ankle sprain. Take a peek inside his brain. This podcast is called JJ Meets World. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start us off and say hello, everybody. We're in order to get everyone who has not yet been a guest on JJ Meets World. We're going to get underway. Just a reminder that we will have two quizzes next week, one on Monday for the chapter five we were going to do today, but because of my merciful nature, we're not doing it today. And then we'll do uh, uh, chapter six on Friday. So, so we can stick with our schedule. And otherwise. now it's recorded. Like, yeah. it's, it's I mean, it's there. In, it's There's there. a record of it. We'll be able to refer back to this, and the <laughs> proof is there because not everyone's even in the room yet. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's a long walk to the parking lot. Someone could destroy all of Tucker's equipment if there's mm-hmm. just, you know, like a bandit mm-hmm. that takes place. But we'll we'll get this thing <laughs> rock and rolling. Uh, introduce yourself to the folks on JJ Meets World. Uh, my name is Sam Hughesby. I'm a sophomore. I'm from uh, Wilmer, Minnesota, which is about two hours straight west of the cities. And I'm a multimedia journalism major. Sam, I really heard the Minnesota yeah, in did. the way you say it. I get told that a lot. So. That's good. That's, yeah. it, you know, it's a unique calling card when you meet people from other parts of the country because... You know, North Dakota, Minnesota, they, they, they might not have met people from that area. And so they're mm. excited to, you know, meet yeah. someone from that area. Uh, what's your favorite vacation spot that you've ever been to? Oh, gosh. Um, I actually went to the Sacramento area over Christmas break. Yeah. That was a good time. It was really nice, you know, because it was 30 below in Wilmer. So it was nice <laughs> to get to the 60, 70 degrees. But yeah, it was a good time. It was really cool. My girlfriend's from there. So we went there for two weeks. But that was a good time for sure. Yeah. Uh, California is one of those states where I don't think people really truly realize how big California is Mm -hmm. and how many different climates, you know, we all think, oh, it's all the beach, right? We Mm -hmm. all go there and it's all just one big beach, the whole state, but there's colder areas when you get up North and wine country is beautiful and has some, you know, seasonal change to it as well. Um, when you went to Sacramento, was there, did you bring home anything? Did you have like a keepsake that said like, hey, I'm from Sacramento? Uh, not really, no. We went to a brewery and I bought a bottle opener, but that was about it. Um, not much, so yeah. So uh, d- brewery tourism yeah. is huge. Yeah, yeah right? it really is. Like We went to like three or four and like, I'm only 20, so I couldn't really tour it. But it, I mean, yeah. like. It but was you could crazy. take in everything yeah, around you? Yeah, yeah. If you ever get the chance, if you get out to... Uh, Wilmington, Delaware, Mm -hmm. there's the uh, brewery for dogfish head, which a head as the body of water. It's like a bay. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that at the time. And I'm like, that's a gross name for a beer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But the guy who founded dogfish head has a really unique story because he was going to college and his senior year, he started brewing beer in a house he shared with eight other people. Mm-hmm. And so he graduates. And his parents are like, what are you going to do? You graduate. You got an English degree. Are you going to go teach? Do you want to write? And he goes, actually, I really liked brewing beer. And so they were going to give him a car. And instead he goes, would you just invest the money you'd put into a car and I will buy more brewing equipment? And so he invented this way of hopping beer where, mm-hmm. you know, the old um, – the old football games that vibrate and you'd watch the players yeah. just vibrate across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he took one of those and a five gallon pail and he screwed all these holes into the five gallon pail and filled it with hops and then put it over the tank that was brewing. Mm-hmm. And so it was a constant hopping technique yeah. that no one else had done at the time. 
And uh, I was when I was there, like, and they're like, and we still have the thing, and it's sitting over in the <laughs> corner if you want to look at it. And I realized at that time, I was like, this is so awesome, but I hate beer. Yeah. I think it just tastes gross. Yeah. What do you think? Well, yeah. <laughs> you passed the test. Yeah. Sam, you passed the test. Good. Uh, yeah. what, a, what a gentleman uh, Sam yeah, look at that. is to be here on campus. <laughs> and he made, he made a cobber informed decision <laughs> to pull yeah. that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, I promise that's the last time I try and uh, trick you on this podcast. Uh, or is it? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so uh, what's your what's your major? I'm a multimedia journalism major. Okay, what does that mean? So, well, I guess my kind of angle, of, like going into school, so uh, my senior year of high school, I was an intern at our local radio station, and I wrote stories online about our different high school sports teams and stuff. And so, like, I, that was I kind of found that, like, I really wanted to do that. So when I like applied here, I was like sports journalism was kind of where I wanted to go. But the closest thing to that was just multimedia journalism. So it's just as far as I can tell, it's just journalism. Like I haven't taken any super major specific classes yet. So but so yeah. did you play any sports? Uh, yeah, I played baseball, football and then basketball. And then so the I, holy trinity of sports. Yeah. And then I played baseball. at Concordia. Yeah. No, pickleball? no, hockey. no. <laughs> Uh, also, I'm kind of surprised hockey's not in there. I mean, oh, isn't that yeah. a Minnesota must? Um, our high school hockey team was like well, the worst in the state. You seem to so. be too nice to be a hockey player. I right? wanted to play hockey, but our high, like I'd say, the four years of high school that I was there, our hockey team probably won less than ten games. Oh, they wow. were not good, so yeah, I kind of stayed away from that. But do yeah, you enjoy watching the, hockey? Yeah, and, and, like the and, wildest and year. You write really about it. And, yeah, as part of your yeah. Yeah, it's a lot future. of fun to watch for sure. But do you envision yourself as a as a broadcaster? Do you want to uh, do you want to do play by cool. play or color? I think or? I'd rather be more of like a writer than mm. a broadcaster. But mm-hmm. if the opportunity arose, I wouldn't say no for sure. So yeah. you know, the writing for sports these days is one of the more intriguing parts of uh, journalism because mm-hmm. it's all time based, right? Yeah. So. You're writing a story at you know at the half point of a game, whether it's you know a halftime or, uh, and you try and get that story out, and then you immediately have to get something out right after the game. Yeah. You got to get those highlights. You got to get those pieces. Yeah. And so a lot of my friends who are in sports broadcasting, they're like, yeah, you know, the game might end at nine thirty, but you're working until eleven because mm-hmm. you want to get that up there. You want to get a photo with it too. Yeah, so. that was definitely the hardest because like my senior year, I was also a manager for the basketball team because I quit before that and um like trying to take pictures while do, being a manager on the bench at the same time was also a challenge but it was a lot of fun for sure it was a good opportunity so yeah if you uh if they had to assign you to one sport what sport you're gonna work at baseball for sure baseball yeah, huh for sure so that mean you're a twins fan? Time. yeah I love unfortunately it. okay so yeah. what all-time greatest twins player oh gosh all time greatest or my favorite? Or fa- oh, yeah, right. let's That's do a, both. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, all time favorite is definitely just Joe Maurer. I mean, yeah. hometown mm. boy, like, can't go wrong with that. Greatest, um, I mean, Harmon Killebrew is up there. Mm. Rod Carew, Tony Oliva, you know. The, have you ever tried that Killebrew root beer? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't I don't care for it. You I'm like it? I'm not a big root beer guy. I mean, I tried it because I felt like I kind of had to. <laughs> you had but, to? But, like, I'm not a big root beer guy, so it wasn't my favorite. Uh, I've been working on a series of radio plays, mm-hmm. and they're set in a fictional town in North Dakota named after Max Kepler. Oh, yeah, Kepler, he's, yeah. Right? Like uh, for my era, you know, you could not get more famous than Kirby Puckett. Yeah, mm-hmm. you my know, cousin of course, is actually named uh, Kirby. What? Mm-hmm. After, after Kirby Puckett? Yeah. So well, that's kind yeah. of neat, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's definitely up there, too, like. Probably one of the best sports moments in Minnesota history mm-hmm. is from him. So yeah, and also I think one wrong. of the greatest collectibles too, like the home run hankies yeah. that they started putting yeah, out. Like sure. those were awesome. Mm-hmm. I still have one that's framed, and I know nothing about sports. Yeah. So my my like uh, target field experience mm-hmm. begins and ends with a hot dog. So <laughs> yeah. and the same thing for the Metrodome back in the day. My most favorite time would be when you leave and the <laughs> the mm-hmm. air pushes you out of the yeah. Metrodome. Um, but I think Minnesota's got an interesting history when it comes to sports and yeah. sports figures. I think that there are people who put a poster up and it stays up until they tear down that house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I mean, Minnesota sports is definitely a struggle. Like we haven't really won anything since 1991. So <laughs> it's kind of hard. Um, yeah, but we're really good at getting your hopes up, aren't yeah, we? <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, it's a good time. Like, I'm never going to switch or anything, so I'm kind of stuck. But hopefully something happens soon, so. Well, there you go. Why not? Yeah, like, this is the year, right? We yeah. always go into every season in this region saying, well, this is the year. Yeah, ex- this is going to be the one. Mm-hmm. And then never is, but. Hopefully one year. We'll see. So yeah, let's we'll say see. that they were like, okay, so you're going to be in sports, but you got to cover the Cardinals. Like the Arizona Cardinals? Yeah. I mean, I'd be fine with it, I guess. Really? Oh, man, that's too bad. I don't know. Yeah, like, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I don't know if there's any teams I'd say no. If it, anything, it'd probably just be the Packers, just because Packers and Vikings, yeah. I don't like them. But Unless you got to take them down, right? Yeah. Be like, yeah, well, well from, they suck again. From the inside. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, just any opportunity would be really cool. So even when, if I had to move to Arizona. but When I lived in Chicago, of course, they are diehard for their teams. Yeah. And there's like a direct line where you start becoming a White Sox fan and yeah. you're no longer a Cubs fan yeah. in town. Um, and the, the, the fever – that grips people during sports is one of my favorite things on the planet because you have you ever been to Wrigleyville by any chance? No, it's definitely on my bucket list, but I just haven't been able to get out there yet. It's, I mean, yeah, it's awesome because imagine. it's like a square mile around mm-hmm. it and everything focuses on the Cubbies. Yeah. And like that, like the Cubs, it's like that's a lifestyle. Like that's just more mm-hmm. than just a sports team. So I bet that was really cool. And like, I don't think a lot of people realize, but like if you want to go to a Bulls game, you are traveling way outside the city. Yeah. It's not like an easy thing to get to yeah. if you live in downtown Chicago. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the Bears, it's easy to get down to see them. But uh, the amount of the amount of fandom that becomes toxic in yeah. Chicago is nothing less than amazing. So yeah. if, you, uh, if you are in town to cheer on a rival team, you make sure you get out of there ASAP. Yeah, for sure. Right? I bet. I can imagine. So let's talk about what kind of podcast you want to make. Well, I actually kind of wanted to do something along the lines with music. Like, I'm a big music guy, and I feel like everyone has, like, I don't know, if it's a song or an artist or whatever that, like, you know, is more than just a song. Like, that, there's a story to tell with that song or that music, and, you know, whether it's, like, a certain memory or they got through you through a hard time, so, like... I like that idea and like I want to I want to hear those stories from other people and like what song or artist or whatever is that for them so yeah after a really bad breakup I locked myself in a room and listened to uh <laughs> the pop version at the end of yeah. an American tale somewhere out mm. there by Linda Ronstadt <laughs> For hours yeah. and hours and hours, so I feel like that's really defined mm-hmm. me to the point of where if that if someone started playing that in this room now, I gotta get out of here. It's, yeah, it still uh-huh. has like the highest gone. play count tally in his iTunes library. It does, <laughs> it does, and it's been on like nine different iPods. Mm-hmm. But I don't. It's under don't play. Yeah. Yeah. So in case of emergencies, well, Sam, it's been very nice to meet you. Good to talk some yeah, sports. I hope it. that. Uh, I didn't sound like a complete and total no, idiot. Not at all. Okay, good. good. See, talk. I can fake my yeah, way that was through a good something. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Thank you. All right. Well, we're, we're Andy's coming up next here. We're waiting for him to come into position. You know, Sam talking about. You know, I, I didn't expect him to say music because I the whole time I'm thinking his sports, podcast sports, was going to be sports related. And and we, as we talked about a little bit before, but that just made me think, Sam, that uh, about you know walk up songs, and that would be a good marriage there. You could say you know ask people to, in addition to songs that got them through hard times or that are very special, what would be their their walk up song? Because that's a different you know that's a specific kind of category. Mine would just be the sounds of people booing. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Welcome to JJ Meets World. Let's introduce you to the listening audience. Uh, thank you. So my name is Andy. I come from Mombasa, Kenya. I'm a multimedia journalism and communication studies major. And I'm oh. a sophomore. Okay, so let me start off with this, Andy. Why Concordia College? Um, honestly, that question is always hard for me to answer because I had like eight more options to choose from. But I think it's because one of the admission officers that I was working with which our high school hired, came to Concordia. And he graduated, I think, in 1990s, thereabout. And it's from him that I learned how the school was a good choice for me. And again, the whole support that the admission team from Concordia was giving us pretty much gave me the, like, told me this was a very, a very good option for me to come to. And so far, do you like it? Yeah, so far I don't regret coming to this school because, again, I have met a number of amazing people, including Dr. Carlson here. 
he's among the first people that I met, the first faculty people that I and met. And I didn't even know faculty. that when Andy came. That, that I, I didn't know how long Andy had been here. Uh, you know, all I knew is that there was a person interested in mm-hmm. um, the TV studio and doing possibly doing Concordia on air. So that so you arrived and it was like, come on in and let's just do let's just do some some stuff. So, I, I think one of the things that really made me come straight to for the Concordion Air program was when I was in high school, that was really my thing. I used to do like um, news every Monday during the assemblies. And so I told myself when I came here, I wasn't going to relax. So like I just wanted to, to continue the same spirit. And that's when I came here. I asked about if like there was any program here. And again, the, the agent had also told me that they had a very good program, um, journalism program. So do you want to work with uh, on-air type stuff? I mean, do you hope to work in a television capacity, a film capacity? Um, my goal is to work in a television capacity. Um, but again, I would also want to work as a news reporter, like going to the field and getting news and all that stuff. Because I'm also interested in investigative news writing. That's, I would say that's part of me. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I'm always amazed at people who feel like they, they need, it's a need inside of them to tell a story. Right. And that's really what the news is. You're telling the story and you're trying to find out all the different viewpoints that you can, when you present those, uh, feelings and emotions to people. Um, one of the things that I've learned working uh, during my day job is how ultra sensitive it is when you go to some something like a tragedy. Yeah. So if you arrive at a house where, let's say, a, the, the the local story, the family who died of carbon monoxide poisoning recently, right? Yeah. Like that is an incredibly touchy, sensitive time, not just for family and neighbors, but for the entire community to hear something like that. Um, do you think you've got the sensibility to be able to handle like very intense moments like that? Honestly, I feel like it's... It's crazy for me because on one side, I really don't like um, intense moments or like things that are very sensitive. For example, I cannot stand seeing blood. But on the other side, I'm that person who is very interested in crimes and investigating crimes. And most of the time you'll find that you cannot do a story that is related to crime that you're not going to encounter Mm -hmm. blood most of the time. So I feel like on one side, I would be able to cover like such moments for example when you're having protests going on and people there's shooting there's all those moments but i really need to encourage myself yeah i i mean i know i couldn't do it and so i'm glad there's people in the world who are willing to work past those Mm -hmm. those what they feel are limitations and i don't like looking at blood either like in fact i can't believe the the horror Mm -hmm. genre nowadays with just every movie seems to be just ultra mutilations. I'm like, whatever happened to just a scary ghost? Like, <laughs> come on, like whatever, whatever happened to those moments, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, let me ask you this: uh, Have you had any culture shock moments while you've been at Concordia? Other than the fact that we're recording this right now during the middle of a blizzard. Um. Yes, of course that has happened most of the time because you know, again, this is a very new environment for me. And you'll find that in classes, most of the examples or most of the things that people talk about is like from Minnesota or within United States. And like, I'm not very conversant with it, but I've taken it up to myself. Like, it's a challenge for me to accept and learn new things because, again, I want to work, let's say, in an international uh, company. And that means that I'll not work with the people that come from my area or from my country. So I'll have to learn new cultures and also learn ways how to like fully integrate into that culture. I feel like there's not a a month that goes by in my life where I don't make some kind of blunder um, as I try and widen my horizons and take in more cultures uh, across the globe. Um, the first time I ever went to Europe, I realized like how different we are just in uh, the brashness of the United States versus kind of the calm attitudes and the way they do things that are considered more polite. Mm-hmm. Um, years ago, uh, I remember sitting in meetings and I believe uh, Dr. Carlson was a part of a lot of these where uh, 
a group from Fargo was making a trek to Africa to work on a documentary Mm -hmm. about one of the lost boys of Sudan who had settled in the United States here. And I remember talking about just like, okay, so when you get on a plane, you don't arrive at your destination and that's it. And all the other things that go into it. And I thought, God, I just don't know anything about the world. Like it does, it doesn't matter how many hours I spend listening to podcasts. I still just am scratching the surface of other cultures. Um, you know, in every time someone comes here and introduces themselves, they say like, oh, um, it's a two-hour drive away from here. I always think, okay, how am I going to put about my place? Is it it's 24 hours flight from here? Is it 36 hours flight from here? So, but again, like moving into a new country or into a new place, that means like you're going to meet new people. At some point, you might feel like you're prepared enough to go and face the new culture, but when you get there, you know, there are always new things that you had not expected and you're going to meet them. But the best thing I would say for me that has really helped me is I kind of knew that this was going to be a very new environment for me. And also like my high school had also prepared me, like you're going to a new place. So this is going to happen to you and you have to be ready for it. Sometimes you'll feel low, sometimes you'll feel like you got it, but all the times you have to remain strong. Do you have, is there... Something that you've experienced while you've been in the United States that is the the, the story that you c- can't wait to tell other people? Um, Whether it's good or bad. I don't know. Like, everything for me is a story. And the best part of it is I have met great people here. And I have met people who are very supportive. Like, most of my friends and most of the people that I am in class with, they're very supportive. And that's one thing that I live to remember about the new place that I came here. That's good. Okay, so let's talk. What do you want to do for a podcast? Um, so apart from being interested in investigative news writing, I'm also kind of align myself with politics and things like that. And so like currently in Kenya, we are about to go for an election. And that will be in August. And I had talked to, like, to my friends. We normally have like a group chat. And we kind of try to analyze politics. And so I was thinking of um, interviewing some of them about what they think, because we have been, I would say, analyzing politics since 2017 or 2018. So we kind of know the development that has been there, the shifting and everything. So that's one thing that I was thinking we could do. And I already talked to them, four of them, and they were kind of, yeah, we can try it. Is there any uh, attempt to squash uh, something like a, a political podcast? Um, um, like, are they trying to censor anything at all? Um, so when I, f- I finished high school in 2020, I in December, I started, I would say I was up something. So we would like investigate and we used to call it Curious Mark Andy. So because it was started by Mark and Andrew. And so... We used to invite people, and I also did that last year over the summer while I was here. And so I realized that most people are kind of interested to hear about what the world is doing in terms of politics and things like that. And that's why I feel like it's going to be a good thing. Well, the good news is is that everyone has an opinion when it comes to politics. Even the people who say that they don't, yeah, they secretly do somewhere. And I'm always interested in the fact that, like, Politics is a is a relatively small wor- word for when when you consider what it uh, is under the umbrella of, right? Mm-hmm. So whether it's hyper localized for a city or even just in a neighborhood, all the way up to the people who are running countries, uh, it I mean, there's a lot going on. And good news, it's never going away. It's not like you're doing uh, about like the latest flavor of Dr Pepper, which might get pulled mm-hmm. off the shelves next month. You know, yeah. there's it's going to be ongoing for a long time. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. So uh, do you see a thing where you are recording and you're recording with people from all over the globe, like so it's kind of remotely done? Yes. So it, it's going to be online. So I will I record on Zoom and then I'll have to transcribe it to audio and then edit. That's yeah. good. And I think, uh, you know, Tucker and I have talked to the getting podcasts transcribed mm-hmm. so that uh, – 
Uh, you, you've got the visual component as well. I mean, that's, that's the next step in podcast evolution, right? Tucker, that's the next big thing. Well, I mean, I actually have to look what this, uh, look up what, uh, software he uses, but our recent guest, Joey Scarillo, who's also a podcaster uses a free online service that does most of the transcribing for you mm -hmm. and actually timestamps it for you so that it can actually take, cause that's going to be the longest thing that you have mm -hmm. to go through. Right. So yeah. I'm going to figure out what website he's using. I'll send it your way. You. Maybe it works for you. Maybe it doesn't, but at the very least, I mean, it can take out as someone who's transcribed a bunch of stuff before. That's like the most tedious, like, you know, uh, involved process. Yeah, if you can get, terrible. if you can get AI to do most of it for you, then that, that should give you a leg up. So I'm going to figure out what that was and we'll send I'm you. I'm still looking for that silver bullet too. I transcribe all the time and it is just like, there goes half my weekend. My understanding is it'll get you like 85, 90% mm -hmm. of the way. Mm -hmm. And then you still have to go through and correct it, but that's still going to save you yeah. hours of time. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll figure that out and pass it along. I just watched the last episode of Book of Boba Fett and I watched it once and then I watched it again with subtitles on. And the subtitles were drastically different than the dialogue you hear. Mm -hmm. They have all these extra lines, and I'm like, no one said that. What's going on? Yeah. So I'm wondering if script. maybe they want you to like. In that case, yeah, I bet. Right? sometimes yeah, they they'll they'll pre-transcribe from a from a script, and then if the actors improvise or they end up with a different edit, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You it's almost have to watch arena. it to like get the full effect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, Andy. Good to uh, know you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Andy. Much. All right, who's up? All right, Noah, come on over. Let me just reset here while Noah's getting into microphone position. Yeah, okay. you can go ahead and manipulate that okay, to whatever's okay. comfy for you. Was, whatever's most comfortable. I don't know if I was supposed to, it was messing with nope, you're good. Up, so, and okay. you're coming in loud and clear, so you're good. All right, awesome. All right, welcome. Uh, introduce yourself to the JJ Meets World listening audience. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Noah Hansen. I am a senior man. What would I be? Business management information systems major with the com minor. It's no a, wonder you have to kind of recall it. It's sort of a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, know, like it's which a mouthful. It, yeah, it is a mouthful. It's a fancy way of Concordia saying, "Well, we technically don't <laughs> offer an MIS degree, but <laughs> right. it's an MIS degree." Yeah. So, what did you say? Com was a minor. Com was a minor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I add, I added that because. Um, I don't know. I, I started doing some media production for my job with ITS and I really oh, liked yeah. like the the process of like video editing and like sound recording and I wanted to like branch out a little bit in case I wanted to. Well, I guess my job still does with um, working in my IT department still involves doing um, like making educational content for uh, staff members or students, which is kind of what my position is. So I wanted a minor to support that. So One of my first paying jobs was <laughs> I made a series of videos for the Fargo public school system about internet safety. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Online anywhere. Can we uh, see these you videos? Know, I think that they are. And they, uh, Steve Maloney is a yep. star in one of them. He, oh, uh, he, he handles piracy Fantastic. where he's downloading stuff off of Napster. Well, we need uh, to find these. It is. Uh, they're, they're pretty amazing. And it was a, a, a series called iSafe, right? So right okay. off the bat, you know, they clearly are written by people who have no idea what is engaging to high school students. And uh, I find that, like, when you're trying to make, like, are you talking about making, like, videos for internal use? Mostly, yeah. Like, guiding people on, here's how you, what was one of the most recent ones I did? It was, uh, like, educational content on how to, like, change a certain thing in Moodle, which is our classroom software. So it's, like, I don't know, either general purpose use or for, like, specific things it's just mean to like it's nice to see someone guide you through it rather than like looking at a pamphlet sometimes mm -hmm. and being like well where am i clicking like this is just a paper screenshot my screen doesn't look like that so tucker's yeah. dad is a uh is like a fake dad to me <laughs> and tucker and i had an agreement a okay, long yeah, time well, that's ago a good way to put it i yeah, guess you <laughs> know he's like he's like your dad but he's also kind of like a fake dad to me <laughs> yeah uh but we had an agreement years ago <laughs> that we were done allowing his dad to like take over our time by being like, hey, I just got a quick question for you on my computer here. And it was like, <laughs> go to YouTube. Go to um, YouTube, <laughs> type in your question. I guarantee you someone has a, made a video to answer that question. Yeah, that's that's my family in a nutshell. It's really... 
Yeah, when I go, you get, you it's get to when be, I go home. Oh no! Yeah, you thank God you're home. I, here's all these tech support uh, issues I have. Uh, I'll have to look so. it up, but there's a website I believe called uh, Let Me Google That For You dot com, <laughs> where what it is is if someone asks you a question, then you go to this site and you type it into Google, and it sends them a video of you typing it into Google oh, and the search results so of it. Good. I've done that a few times to my dad, and but but then he's he doesn't know how to open that video. <laughs> when when oh. b- b- when I was back in high school, I remember spending twenty minutes trying to get him to understand that um, his Yahoo email was accessible via the internet, and he had to open Internet Explorer. And he go, "Well, no, that's I- Internet Explorer. I want my Yahoo." And I'd be like, "That's I know. We're going. <laughs> we're going there." He's like, "I want my Yahoo dot com." I was like, "That's where we're going, Dad." <laughs> And it just, it, so I feel your pain, man. Yeah. You, that was literally me two days ago. I spent 45 <laughs> minutes trying to explain that. Here's, so. what, here's what, here's a little glimpse into your future too. When you finally lay down the hammer with them and go, you guys need to stop doing this. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to invite you out to dinner. And then as you come into the restaurant, you're going to see a laptop open on the <laughs> table. And, and one of them, their brow is going to be furrowed and they're going to be typing through it. And, oh, they're buying me dinner. And they're right. bringing their laptops, uh, so I'll fix so it for them that way. So it'll shift over to a guilt-based yeah. kind of, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you uh, some compensation. Yeah, I want you to see these photos of uh, this waterfall of South Dakota I took photos of. <laughs> I'm like, I don't I want to no. know. Uh, well, I guess I have something to look forward to. That, so. <laughs> what was, I, I, I missed the name of it. What was the name of the software you're using in class? Mo, 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 Oh, Mo- the the classroom management Moodle. software is called yeah, Mo- Moodle. Yeah, Moodle. Oh, I, I thought you were saying uh, editing software. I was curious about no, no, no. that. No, no, no. For was. editing software, I mean, I've been working in Premiere. But okay. The, uh, before that, I didn't even have access to Premiere, so I taught myself how to uh, edit in a free software open source called Shotcut, mm-hmm. which worked really well. And like, I kind of like wanted to go back to it when I started learning Premiere because I had gotten so used to using it. But um. I mean, yeah, I know. I, I just kind of like used what I had at the time to teach myself. It, like, that's how you do it, though. I mean, it really is, you know, they can do basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it's really the skill of the user who's really going to decide what comes out the other end of that. Mm-hmm. When I was uh, in Chicago, I was going to Columbia. And it was right at the era where they were like, hey, listen, we know that digital is the future, but we think that the practical training of this includes you working with film celluloid as well. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was like a revolution of kids out there being like, why are you training us in a method that we will literally never be asked to do in the real world? That being said, there's a difference when you have to like actually cut and snip something versus like being able to do it and be like, oh, I don't like that, edit, undo. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I think it modern filmmakers need to learn a little bit more about that, right? To be, you know, more judicious with some of the things that they cut. And uh, certainly I wouldn't want to go back. I mean, do you want to go back, Greg, to cutting and uh, relining well, and using tape? I, I mean, you're, you're, you're right that physical editing gives you a sense of, you know, the length of a shot, for instance, by just, you know, how far your arms might stretch out to do it. But I know uh, our our friend uh, Ray Rea at MSUM still mm-hmm. teaches some on film course courses where you have to you know physically shoot you know shoot uh, celluloid and then physically cut it. Uh, but no, I mean I think uh, the documentary Side by Side, hosted by Keanu Reeves, has all these great you know George Lucas is in it, mm-hmm. David Lynch is in it, James Cameron's in it, uh, all these filmmakers talking taking sides. And it's really interesting to see, you know, you've got David Fincher on the one hand saying, I would never touch, you know, film again. You couldn't pay me. David Lynch saying, I'm done. You know, f- there's no way I would ever touch film again. And then you've got, you know, Spielberg and, and Christopher Nolan saying, are you out of your mind? Film, there's, you can't replicate the feel and look of film in any digital format. If you, uh, if you weren't allowed to uh, make a traditional uh, like film a traditional project, let's say. If they're like, listen, you've got 24 hours, but you can't use what would be considered a camera as its number one purpose. So you, like a cell phone you could use because that is not its mm. number one intended purpose. Do you have a device in mind that you'd want to use? I, that's a bizarre it's, question, it's, so take a moment. I don't know. I feel, I feel like that would be something that would be really interesting to do is actually to try to produce content entirely on a cell phone. I think that that's something that I've always like been really interested about. Cause like I've realized like, Oh, I could literally go through basically 
with the way that everything is like digital submission nowadays and like everything can connect to each other. I was like, it'd be weird. It'd be weird to see like how much of like my job I could just do on a cell phone. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. and I don't know. I think that's what I would do. I would be like, can I do this all in like a digital editing suite on a cell phone and like, and submit myself. it straight yeah. from the and cell phone too. And submit it my and make it make it something that would be acceptable to be used by other people. So. Yeah, the uh, mm-hmm. in the two minute film festival, I remember years ago, there one of the films was like completely done on like a Nokia six mm-hmm. in the credits. Mm-hmm. Right? It was, it was yep. like a was it a stop animation of the boat. Mm. Is that I don't remember what it was? the content, but we've had a few yeah. like that mm-hmm. that are that are shot on really. I mean, there was the, there was a movement after digital took you know took the world by mm-hmm. storm for some artists to go to run in the opposite direction. And so I remember Michael Almereda used a Fisher price camera. There was a camera that was popularly called pixel vision. It was a, so it was so low res. I mean, it was lower than, than (laughs) SD and it, but it gave this like interesting feel, this sort of like electronic sheen Mm. to everything. And I'm, I'm fascinated by that are people who wanted to go lo-fi instead of the fanciest, or version. even the the filmmakers who decide like listen I'm going to I'm going to get rid of modern filming techniques I'm going to go after uh, I think of uh, the saddest music in the world as being a movie that was produced in the 20th century right it was after 2000 right yeah yes yeah. that used these old like german expressionist techniques and still to this day I if if I ever bump into anyone f- like who was a part of that production I will tell them like listen I can't remember a time when I've sat in a theater and something has changed the way I thought about this because I went in thinking like, great, black and white, <laughs> old techniques, Gah, come on. And I just blown away by it. Not only is the story fantastic, but it's just utterly and completely like watching something from another world. Truth. It was mm. good stuff. Okay, so uh, do you have the patience to work with people explaining how to use technical things because there are plenty of uh, neo luddite i think is the the term <laughs> the people who are like i still print my emails <laughs> uh i mean i kind of have had i've had to be um i mean like i was on a like a 45 minute phone call with someone who is trying to just set up email on their phone and i couldn't like <laughs> talk i couldn't see what oh. they were doing cuz they they mm. weren't using a computer so i had to <laughs> w- talk them through it um, and I, I don't know, I, I've always been told that I'm a relatively patient individual and I guess it shows up well with the technology. It's just that it's a very fulfilling process, I guess, to not know exactly what you're going to be dealing with on a daily basis, but knowing that you're going to like help people be more successful in whatever they're doing in this like really ever changing world of technology. So, so b- before we sign off, mm-hmm. you should give us a, your pitch, a short oh, pitch on the, yes. on the podcast thought. My podcast. Um, I've been putting a lot of thought into this and I really don't know exactly how to describe it, but like I want to do a podcast exploring why people enjoy things. Um, so I lo- coming to college, I really like learned a lot about like enjoying things that I never thought I would enjoy. One of my friends, my close friends, Grant Eggers was really into um, weird niche music and he listening to him talk about it really inspired me to start looking at it. And my friend Nick Lyle was into like uh, films. He was the one who introduced me to Don Hertzfeld. Mm-hmm. I watched um, It's Such a Beautiful Day and that changed my entire view on animation. Yeah. And that's where I like really got into animated films. So I want to try to explore topics that people enjoy that I might not enjoy and then try to figure out if I can apply the things that they enjoy in order for me to better understand the concept and look into it more. So One of my favorite films of all time is a movie called Captain Ron. Mm. Starring Kurt Russell and Martin Short from the <laughs> early '90s. It's a masterpiece. And by all by all accounts, it's a bad movie, but I love it, and I can't tell you why I love it. But Tucker uses it as a weapon against me sometimes. Oh so when you get this once. podcast, I did it once, so many times. He ends arguments with like, "Well, you like Captain Ron," yeah, and it just kind of shuts thing. me down, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I just want to dismiss JJ's opinion outright, <laughs> everyone's yeah. got that. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, well, thank you very much. I yeah. want to be on your podcast talking about Captain Ron. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, who's up? Zimmy's coming over. All right, Zimmy, let me reset and get. Ready for the next. These are great. Good job, everybody. So far, so good. God, You're looking pretty sharp today, Zimmy. Thank you. This is scary. <laughs> so, uh, 
Zimmy, the person who's not taking the class but comes to the every single one of the classes? Am I correct in that? Right? Yeah, oh, but you know, I, I skipped two, but <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> we should not talk about yeah, it. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we should not talk. Listen, no, don't one worry. From administ- no, no, no one from administration right, is listening then, to JJ Meets World. I know. Then, <laughs> okay, then, then I'll be in trouble. Right. Uh, in. Introduce yourself to the listeners, please. Uh, so I'm um, Zimmy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, it. Uh, that, 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 yeah, that's my name. Okay, yeah. Zimmy. Last thing you ate? Uh, coffee. Coffee. Okay. Coffee. Well, Des- describe the coffee. Okay, no, so it's, it's from. Car- is that from Caribou? Well, technically, it's from like coffee shop. So, oh, here. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of boring actually. Uh, but I always drink coffee with mint. So actually, that's the mint mocha. Uh, it's free, so nice. do not complain about that. Yeah. yeah right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Free food is always the best one. Always especially. tastes the best, especially mm-hmm. unexpected free food. If you exactly. show up yeah. and you weren't expecting free food, yeah. it tastes better than other food. Yeah. Also, especially when you're a college student. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you put mint. So I'm not a coffee drinker, full okay. disclosure. Oof. Okay, so I love the smell. I love holding coffee, but I can't stand the taste of it. It's just not something that I care for. But I do like mint. Yes. And so the the idea of mint being in that mocha kind of gets my attention. Why mint for you? I don't know. I I, I have a lot of like I ate a lot of mint when I sh- growing up. So mint cake, mint boba tea, you know, like all the Asian food that mm-hmm. you can put mint in it. I just put My mint. next door neighbor had mint leaves, mint let leave plants growing in her flower bed. Oh. So when I was a little kid, we'd just sneak over and pluck the leaves and just chew them. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, chlorophyll, like the green, you know, mm-hmm. leafy stuff. Yeah, we have mint chlorophyll over there in Vietnam. And I just bring that every day, which is kind of weird, but. Is it like a liquid then that you drop yeah. in something or is yep. okay? It's a liquid. Huh. Interesting. I also eat. Tooth, toothbrush when I was a kid. And I was like, that's a lot of mint there. So, I mean, why not? <laughs> and then I realized that's just wrong. Uh, <laughs> but you know, yeah. like, that's what you're supposed to do when you're a kid, right? You're supposed to eat stuff that you're not supposed to eat all the time. And then someone tells you to spit it out. Babies and dogs get the same command. Spit it out. Drop it. Drop it. What did you eat? Um, so, Zimmy, tell me a, tell me some of your interests. Like, tell me what uh, what what makes your world a brighter place. Oh wow, wow, that's a hard question to answer for me. Would you like the th- what are things that you don't like? What's <laughs> well, clearly Dr. Carlson's class is one of the positives. Yes. Yes. Well, and Zimmy and I bo- have bonded over um, physical media. You know, yeah. collecting movies, movies, and that's Excellent. I love. I love to talk to people about cl- their movie collections. I literally just bought six VHS tapes on my way here when I went to a thrift shop. I got some. Oh. Charlie Brown tapes. I got an old BBC of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I got a Ooh. tape of Battlefield Earth starring John Travolta. Which is so I'm with you know, you. widely considered one of the worst movies yes, of, its, it, of its era. But it sparks joy in yes. me. Yes. And it makes me think of my friend Mike Rezel because I went to see it with him in the theaters when we were kids. And then I yelled at him afterwards because I said, <laughs> why did you bring me to this movie? But now I own it on VHS. So what kinds of uh, move, like what kind of physical media are you are you typically collecting? Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so I don't know. I mean, since I took Dr. Carson class, my taste in movie getting weird and weirder. Yes, that's the that's, that's exactly the, goal, the effect right? that he has that's on the, all of us. That's the goal. I don't know. That's Make a good it weird. goal for like normal people because <laughs> <laughs> my friend went back, you know, he um, transferred and then during the winter break, he went back and I show him some of the movie that I watched in class or you know i watched outside of class and he at some point begged me that please show me something that have a no more ending <laughs> because like i show him like uh, moonrise kingdom which is pretty nice mm-hmm. the, you know but like the age is kind of like what the heck is happening uh inside uh luke Lewin Davis, yeah, Lewis you, Davis, I, you yeah. were really when you saw that that was like a total i know light bulb moment yep. yeah I mean, the the graduate is a weird one, but the music is so good. Mm. And then uh, I start to show him like, well, I mean, I haven't shown him the eraser head yet. I'm gonna say you're building, it. you're working your way up yep. to eraser head. Mm-hmm. You gotta yep. have, yeah, that's that's a special one. <laughs> uh, Harrow and Mall. Not many people can watch that. Uh, classic but, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. classic. Oh, oh, the classic one. But then it's weird, kind of like what is happening? Why is this happening? 
internal sunshine of the oh my god internal sunshine of the spotless oh. mind yes. yeah michelle gondry mm-hmm. have you watched any of the music videos directed by michelle gondry because if you like his films the music videos are going to take you to another planet oh. and they are fan Fantastic. He did stuff for the White Stripes. He did stuff for. What, did he do Fatboy Slim or was that Spike Jones? Uh, that was uh, Spike Jones. Maybe Spike Jones. But the Michelle Gondry. There's a. There's a. I don't think it was ever released on Blu-ray, but it's on DVD. Right. Is in the, is in the a, director series. In the director right. series is a, just a DVD box set of all of Michelle Gondry's like non-feature length movies. Yeah. And that is like like having a little mini film mm. festival in one night because even it, the menu to it yeah. is something is, to be watched. Is, is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So highly recommend uh, you know getting hold of that yes mm-hmm. so Daft when Punk, you York. do you ever just take a recommendation and be like okay so i will find this and watch it uh, i mean during the break yes but like the school yes Oof. too busy yeah especially all the film class you know dr carson is killing me with all the tests <laughs> well no it's not that bad <laughs> well, no, I, that, that's a good uh opportunity for me to say one of the things i um have admired about zimmy is the way that when you when you took your first film class and you showed such an enthusiasm and an interest and a deep passion for it, and you were and you came you came to me for a conversation and said, "Yeah, you know, my mom really doesn't want me to study films." Yeah, right. Still and not. then, you, but you had to figure out a way you could do you could do it all, and that's what you're well, doing. Well, well, that's why I have like three major, two minors. So <laughs> yeah. I, I I blame Dr. Carson a, a little bit on that. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, I mean. And then I, I don't know what happened, but then during the break, is I got also into philosophy and Kierkegaard. And then, so the plan now is actually for me to take philosophy and film. I'm pretty sure like next semester, next year. And if and hopefully if Dr. Connell is coming back out of administration, he he's going to be teaching his yep. Kierkegaard film class. He is coming back next year. It's going to be a win-win. Yep. He There's is. a whole series of books that bleed those two things, like the philo- philosophy and the matrix, philosophy and Seinfeld, oh, those are great. and kind of the the way that they blend those two things together. You're in for a lot of interesting reads as well. Like, have you read Philosophy and Matrix? Uh, matrix? Not that one. No. It's a. It's so. I've read a few. Get ready. I don't care for the Matrix. Uh, I didn't care for the first one that came out, and I certainly didn't like this last one. <laughs> yeah, but you like yeah. Captain Ron. But I, so. uh, see, I told you, he weaponizes it. Uh, <laughs> but I know that it, so when the first Matrix movie came out, it opened up this whole world of philosophical discussions uh, amongst people in my age group, right? So now they wanted to dive into like, okay, so what would you choose? You know, do you want to be a part of the Matrix and mm-hmm. be, uh, you know, and never know, or do you want to live in this hyper violent reality where you, you know, no longer are plugged into the machine? And uh, it it certainly influenced a lot of really bad psych papers uh, <laughs> in my generation that I'm sure a lot of people had to read at one point. Um, it, okay, give a pitch for a movie that you love that more people should see. Oh God. Ooh, anything, one. yeah. Anything you loved. Or anything you've seen recently. Oh, this is hard. I don't know. Uh I'm trying to think of like a movie that people will have will not question my you know. That's see, here's the beauty though. Like there's somebody out there who agrees with you. Mm-hmm. It might not be someone in this room, but someone out there agrees with you. So like here's a movie that I love, The Road to Wellville. I rented it as a kid. It is one of the most bizarre movies you're ever going to see based off a real place called Battle Creek, Michigan, where all these cereal companies got their start. But it was also home uh, to Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, the guy who eventually had the sons who formed the Kellogg's Corn Flakes Corporation. He had a, like uh, uh, this like health spa that he opened that was just bizarre like they would do things like electrocute you in a bathtub to yeah, try he was sort and of like re- a quack re- wasn't he? total I mean, quack yeah he, he, he didn't really i mean he was just off his 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 head trying all these different wild things yeah like they had every morning you'd stand out and you had a laughing class where you go <laughs> because he felt that laughter so it's a movie about this place it's got matthew broderick and bridget fonda uh anthony hopkins plays right. dr kellogg it is just wild See, so there you go. Is there a movie that you like like that? Okay, so <laughs> I feel like every film class that I, you know, took, I, I would have like one or two movies. Like I would like, oh, this maybe like 
this class are like this three mm-hmm. based on each unit. Uh, so let's just start with the last unit I took and, you know, the test yesterday, which went horrible wrong. Uh, but <laughs> I think it would be uh, Cold War. Cold War. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of took me a second because it was made in like 2018, but then mm-hmm. it's black and white and it's it's square and mm-hmm. then it's like Soviet Union and then all the stuff that for me, after spending three years here, I start to learn like American and communism should not stand in the same sentence unless there's like word hate in it uh-huh, <laughs> or maybe uh-huh. like, uh, you know, something like that. So yeah, so I was like, oh, interesting. It's a, did not expect, you know, Dr. Carson to show a movie, that kind of movie early in the semester. You know, normally he just like, let us dive in and like, oh no. <laughs> you you think we, we normally, we like kind of ease into it and then the, the wild yeah. stuff happens? Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah. I hadn't and thought then of it like that. The global, yeah, the, the class that I'm taking now is just like immediately like jump in into like the first class we took, like we, the cousin, uh, you know, director of the movie. Mark uh, Cousins, yeah. yeah. He was the story like, of film. Uh, we have to focus on the uh, human, uh, the body and the face. And then immediately we start to watch like some weird video clip like under the skin. And then immediately after that it's like a babble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It starts to be like in the weird start immediately. And I was like, oh, wow. I did not expect this. You know, so yeah. Tell us about your podcast before we, we run out of time. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> That's the problem. I did not even expect this to happen today too. So I would recommend you record something where it's you giving running commentary mm. while watching something for the first time. Oh. And if you're looking for any other suggestions, Ask Dr. Carlson to find a couple movies that are delicious mm. to recommend to you. Mm-hmm. Oh. Delicious meaning they're so bad, they're good. Yeah. So an yeah. example would be Plan 9 from Outer Space it's or so Manos, The Hands of Fate. Mm-hmm. Ones that when you watch, you go, I cannot believe yeah. people decided, yes, this is ready to be seen by an audience. And then maybe just give some commentary on it as you're watching. I feel like at some point we'll roast the movie. So. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Zimmy. Yeah. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, oh wow. <laughs> that went by fast. Goes by fast. <laughs> Is Bliss coming over? Okay. All right. Fantastic. We're who and who's left after this? Is it just Emma? Okay. We'll make it. We're gonna make it. <clears throat> Hello, Hi. welcome to JJ Meets World. Please introduce yourself to the listeners. Okay, my name is Bliss Dungno, and I'm measuring psychology. And I'm a senior. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> okay. Just get a little bit closer to the microphone. Okay. You're good. Thank you. So psychology. Uh-huh. Let's start unpacking that, right? Yeah. Because there's a <laughs> lot. Uh, what draws you to psychology? I don't know. So I'm interested in people's lives. <laughs> it's not like, it's not about like trying to dig into their lives or trying to criticize them. But I love listening to people's like what they have gone through and then how they become success or like how they overcome their hardship, all those things. So yeah, that, w- that makes me interested in psychology. I, uh, I was born in the year of the pig, mm-hmm. which I'm told makes me a great listener. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Uh, but I find that one of the things that interests me the most is how many roadblocks people put up for themselves, mm-hmm, exactly. right? And so in psychology, you know, I'm sure that that must be one thing that you study is this never ending, just like creation of things that stop people from being happy, from achieving their goals, mm-hmm. from moving forward with relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but I'm surprised because I thought it was only going to be like the, uh, those things. But when I actually go into like studying psychology, a lot of things is related to like anatomy and biology is kind of similar. So it was like kind of putting me off because that's not what I'm expecting. I have to l- learn a lot of things about the brain and the cognition and stuff. So yeah, it was a surprise, but I still like it though. <laughs> so uh Tell me an interesting fact that, like, that you learned about the brain and how that pertains to psychology. Yeah, so um, the brain, the, uh, okay, <laughs> I was not ready to answer this, but like, um, so uh, the brain, okay, 
for example, like if a person have an accident, um, and they have like something like uh, they have a concussion or a, they have brain damage, it can it can um, it can erase their uh, recognition of the face. So, which is one thing that is very interesting to me, and um, they will not be able to like see look memorize people's face like the face is just blank and they could uh, they will just remember to their voice i don't know if you have heard about that one so uh-uh. it, yeah i'm surprised like because we learn all of those things and we learn about the CT scan and then the brain scan like emr and all those things and i was like so surprised because it's so related with doctors and yeah it's very interesting <laughs> I had a friend who had a very intense uh, accident in Chicago and mm-hmm. had extreme uh, trauma to his brain, so much so that they had to cut out, out a chunk of his skull to relieve like some of the swelling. Mm-hmm. And I flew down to Chicago and meeting with the doctors for the first time and having them set our expectations, his family and his friends of like, he may not recognize you mm-hmm. when he comes out of this coma yeah. or he may suddenly, you know, not have an interest in anything that interested him before. Mm -hmm. And it certainly, it was like a week until he kind of became what we knew of him, right? So, you know, things were moving a little slower. You could tell he was trying to process things in a different way, Mm -hmm. and it unleashed a lot of anger in somebody who everyone thought was just this total sweetheart. But there was a lot of anger that came out of that situation for him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and so when you, okay, so when you're working with psychology, if someone can't, you know, if a face comes up and I don't recognize a face, we say that like, oh, I recognize your face, right? That's a mm-hmm. common thing that people say to each other when they're trying to say, I remember you. So if I can't process like faces and if I'm constantly coming up with blank things, so Having someone speak to you must be the most important thing then, right? So that you can register who they are with their voice? Yeah, so the thing that I'm talking about is not a memory loss. It is their, because, because of their eyes and um, the connection with their brain. So all of the faces are gone, but the memory of the voices and the memory with that person is like still remaining. But they, they cannot like process the face. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's complicated. I think we should move on to a different topic. Because <laughs> oh, <okay, okay. laughs> uh, I, I was just looking up um, the story of Phineas Gage. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of this guy? No. He had a a tamp. He worked on the railroad, and he had a tamping rod, and mm-hmm. to you know to to blast uh, hard sections of rock, he forgot to put the cotton damping uh, between the gunpowder and the rod. Mm-hmm. And as he this rod was about you know three feet long. And it went through his, oh under his neck and through his frontal lobe of his brain, like wow. the, all the way through. He and he die. survived. Oh my gosh. And it fundamentally changed his personality. And he became one of the first cases mm-hmm. uh, in the study of psychology about how the brain affects our personality. Yeah. I wanted to make a movie about this uh, so badly that mm-hmm. I wrote a script with two friends when we were in college um, about Phineas Gage. And there was a uh, a physician named Antonio Damasio, who'd written a book about um, the the you know the brain and personality, mm-hmm. and I just I wrote to him because I knew he was one of the the current experts on Phineas Gage. And this guy, I was just a, a college kid. He wrote back to me, and he sent me this huge packet of research papers. He didn't have to do that. I mean, he's a super busy guy. Obviously, he was a Harvard. This was a Harvard uh, professor. And uh, it touched me, you know, so it's still my, still a dream to mm-hmm. be able to make this movie uh, about Phineas Gage someday. Yeah, I think it would be so fun to watch and like it will shine a light on a lot of people that how the brain, even though some of some, because a lot of people think that like if the brain is damaged, then they are dead or right. it's they are done. But a lot of the time, like even part of the brain is damaged, they could still survive and carry on a normal life so it is interesting to me too (laughs) so what would you like to do with your degree what what would you like to do with your degree do you want to go on to treat patients research no i'm not planning to um continue the psychology path but i'm interested in nonprofit organization and i'm also very interested in like doing podcasts and doing making videos and all this thing like i try to do podcasts or 
YouTube videos just like you guys as a side um, hobby and try to look for a job in no Do you have a channel, a YouTube channel? I do. No? <laughs> Mm -hmm. did you put did you put the videos that you made last semester on there no um my youtube channel is more about like my life okay. but if if i were to continue i want to make about people like and because okay so i i started my youtube channel during my freshman year with no knowledge about video making but then one of my one of my friends, he knows about these things. So he kind of like introduced and he's also new, but we are like very curious. So we decided to buy a bunch of stuff like equipments. And yeah, we started like that. But then um, things get rough because we're college kids. So we <laughs> didn't continue. If not, like we might already have 10K subscribers, but we we like pause for a while. So if I were to start again, I want to make it, I want to like, plan it really good so that we don't have to like take a break so we can be consistent because once you, like social media stuff once you like pause it's very hard to bounce mm. back and even in, when you bounce back it's hard to gain like the audience that you already have so that's what I learned but yeah I feel like if you're not consistent too you open up opportunities for people to steal your idea and <laughs> run with it right so um, constantly you know do I see Oh, this is a great, you know, YouTube series. And someone's like, you know, they didn't start this. Like they weren't the first people to think about dropping stuff onto a giant trampoline. It mm -hmm. actually was were these people, but they were only coming out with a video once every three months. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, quantity rather than quality in some cases. Uh so do you have an idea for a podcast that you want to launch that's part of this, or are you gonna continue something you've already been working on? I, I wanna make it um, a new thing. I wanna start from fresh and I want to make it more about like inviting guests and then talking about their life that's what i want to do but enough with my life story <laughs> enough <laughs> with my life story that's what i want to say because um there's so certain things that i don't want to share to the audience but then the audience want to know you know and th did that kind of get complicated so yeah i want to make it more about people rather than myself <laughs> mm, sure sure yeah i think one thing that you know just going forward uh i think people they they look for you to show a little bit of vulnerability so that they'll open up and be vulnerable for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you remember, you can always cut stuff out at the end. That's the exactly. beauty of a podcast <laughs> is the listener only gets to experience what you choose mm -hmm. as it comes out. So, well, that's yeah. awesome. So, well, congratulations on what you've done so far. Do you want to pitch your YouTube like channel if people want to <laughs> find it and watch it? Maybe get you up to that 10K subscriber number? <laughs> I think <laughs> I want to make it. I would. I okay. So my YouTube channel, even though I was in it in the all of the videos, at first I was like very interested and very into it. But then I look it back, I feel so cringe. <laughs> no, that's we we Tucker and I talk about this all the time. That anything you make or say or write or create that's just who you were at that point in time mm -hmm. and there's no there's no shame in that i mean mm -hmm. there's you know everyone should be afforded the opportunity for growth and and so <laughs> i i think you know the opposite quite the opposite you should be proud of those of those things and say there were milestones along the way tucker has a series of videos where i am dressed in baby clothes <laughs> as a full grown man <laughs> playing a man baby yeah. so i understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. and when i ran for mayor of fargo in 2006 we had to scrub the internet of that <laughs> stuff uh, so well thank you very much yes. i look forward to hearing one of the podcasts where you get to interview somebody mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you. bless All right. Come and on here down. Here comes Emma. Okay. <clears throat> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Rhythmic. Okay. This is it, right? Everybody else has been interviewed, correct? Wow. How awesome is that? So Emma gets to be the final interview for Whoa. this episode of JJ Meets World. So Let's excited. get real, Emma. And go ahead and get, get even <laughs> okay. closer in that yeah. microphone. There you go. So, Emma, introduce yourself to the listeners, please, and thank you. Yeah, so my name is Emma McConville. I'm a sophomore, a multimedia journalism major, and I'm from Brainerd, Minnesota. Brainerd, Minnesota. Brainerd, Minnesota. Been there many, many times. You have? Okay. I have, yeah, yeah. I like Brainerd. It's just fine, right? <laughs> Were you excited to get out of Brainerd? A little bit. 
Um, there's not really anything to do. And the only really cool thing that happened before I went on to graduate is that they were making like this entire like fine arts center. And I was like a band kid obsessed with music. Um, but I never got to perform in it because they were building it. And that was like past my time. But I'm really glad that it's built now and concerts are being held in there. And just seeing it's really cool. That's like the only cool thing about Brainerd. Though, I don't know. You've got the world's largest ice fishing tournament, right? The Brainerd JCs put that on every year. Yeah, but like I know nothing about that. Like fishing does not. Is something it's like Paul fish. Bunyan? Is there a Paul Bunyan in, in Brainerd? There's a Paul Bunyan. In yeah. 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 Oh, so that's a good. That's a that's cool. That's some very Minnesota kind is of thing. Is it the one that's holding his hand down so he can get into it, or is it one where he's standing up? Because there's two rival Paul Bunyans in Minnesota, right. if I'm not mistaken. Oh gosh, this was so long ago when I went. I think he was like sitting down mm-hmm. and like. My parents would give the name to right, the person who's yeah, speaking it's the one, Paul Bunyan. Yes, I've heard a number of stories on public radio yeah. about this whole phenomenon. Um, there's a This American Life podcast that talks about someone who worked at the Macy's, um, the Christmas tree that knows your name. Yeah. And so they do the same, the same thing. Your parents sort of surreptitiously feed your name. And then you as a little kid are just blown away that yeah. this inanimate object does. Uh, knows who you are. Yeah, it creeped me out a little bit. I was like, how do you know my name? That's so weird. Uh, If you uh, go to Universal Studios like in the next two weeks, because I guess they're taking this ride out, but there's an E.T. ride where you feed your name in at the beginning, and as you're leaving, you're on these bikes. Have you seen E.T.? No. Yeah, yeah. See, this is why they're tearing the ride out. Uh, <laughs> That's a heartbreaker, I gotta tell you. But on the way out, the little E.T. alien goes like, my Emma, and you go, what the? <laughs> That's I awful. mean, I'm sure when it came out, like when this ride opened in 1985, mm-hmm. it was massive. It was massive. Right? Yeah. Oh. I, I've uh, been to Universal two times, and each time rode E.T. multiple times just because it's so special it's and so nostalgic. Fun. Yeah. It's, you, and you've never seen the movie. No. Emma, we gotta we I gotta know. correct that. I know. We gotta figure out a way for you to <laughs> see know. ET. I know. Well, I took your global cinema class because well, we're not gonna I watch want it in, to get... we're not gonna watch ET in global cinema. <laughs> that's fine. But that's fine. We could. It but could like... be like um, interstellar global right. cinema. <laughs> Why don't you make that class, Greg? Why don't you make a space cinema class? I like, it. I like it. You know, I wasn't like a like a film person as a kid. So like now that I'm actually really interested in film and like doing something along those lines, like documentary making and all that fun stuff. Um, I feel like I should get I should get some of knowledge about like but film that's, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's you just kind of it's along the along the ride. You just you know see things, pick them up along the way. Yeah. Like we just watched uh, best worst movie oh. about the making of yeah. Troll too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and if you're into music too, there's a lot of absolutely killer music documentaries, yeah. especially mm-hmm. concert film documentaries. Mm-hmm. My favorite is absolutely The Last Waltz okay. with the band directed by Martin Scorsese. Oh, so good. And so if you're into in, into elite, you know, amazing music, some of the best music you're gonna hear mm-hmm. from some of the greatest musicians of all time and documentary filmmaking from one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, check out The Last Waltz. Okay. Good recommendation. But you should see E.T. first because it's one of the top grossing <laughs> films of yeah. all time. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll totally watch it. I mean, I- It's one of the most traumatizing films. It has ruined generation after generation after generation of people for trusting the government. It's I'm a lot of racist pieces, oh, though. It, it did. did. It, it did. did. And the, even that's an interesting story about <laughs> yeah. how M&Ms are like, no, we won't be a part of this alien movie. Are you kidding what, me? what, you know, who was the exec at M&Ms who made that call? Because well, it's not like Spielberg didn't have a reputation. He'd already directed Jaws. He'd already directed Raiders mm-hmm. of the Lost Ark. And they're still like, M&M, no, we're too good for a Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, I heard a similar, so M&M, Reese's Pieces plays a big part. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, Pixar approached Mattel about having Barbie in the first Toy Story, and they're like, forget that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be part of one of your chintzy animated movies. And then when Toy Story 2 came around, they're like, we'd love for you to have Barbie. And they're like, like, that's great. We need $6 million to include that character in there. And so I always think if you're you're asked by a film studio to include your product, why not? Mm -hmm. But then you end up with something where like the alien – kills a bunch of kids <laughs> yeah. and they're all there and they're traumatized because they were all enjoying oh henry bars or something like that right <laughs> uh okay so brainerd minnesota also famous because it's tied into the movie fargo yeah have you seen fargo no no mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's okay i have a feeling like, here's i worked at a video store for a long time yeah and i had a manager who constantly hired people 
who had no business working in a movie store. Mm. They should have been working at the suntan parlor next door because none of these people had seen any movies. And so I remember someone coming in and being like, do you have The Godfather? And my coworker, Nicole, being like, you betcha. And she went and she grabbed The Dog Father, which <laughs> was an animated film about a mafia dog. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, did you just not hear him? Like, no, this is the, the you know, the Godfather. And I'm like, what's well, the dog father, first of all? And she had no idea because she had never seen the Godfather, which makes me think she watched the dog father and didn't <laughs> get it at all because it's clearly a parody of a different movie. Oh gosh. I that know. Sounds awful. It sounds awful, right? <laughs> it sounds so bad. Uh okay, so what what do you want to do? What's what's the dream? So the, you oh. you finish college. What do you want to do? <laughs> That's that's such a loaded question. It I is. Want, I want to do so many yep. things with my life. Like, filming is one of them. I really, really want to start a podcast. Like, ever since middle school and I discovered this one podcast about, like, serial killers and, like, diving deep into Ooh. stuff. I also fell in love with, like, some documentaries. I'm not exactly the expert on it, but, like... That's why you're the, here, though. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're soaking all this stuff up now. Like, the process of, like, filming it, editing it interviewing people i just i love all of it um so like i would love to be part of like making a documentary maybe doing some fest like going to festivals and like i don't know i want to do so many things i also want to have like a side makeup gig for like bridal makeup. oh okay yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i love makeup and i mm -hmm. love the way it makes other people feel i love being creative in that sense and I don't know. I just want to do so many things. I could do so many things. Four years ago before I was married, I would have thought, yeah, you, makeup, great, you know, if you're interested. And then the woman who was supposed to do my wife's makeup on our wedding day didn't show. Like, just okay. didn't show. Whoa. And so we had to call a friend at the last minute, and she came and did an amazing job. But that almost ruined our wedding day for her. Yeah. And so that you hold so much power in the palm of your hands with that yeah. that like good for you if that's something that you're passionate about like that's awesome go for it right you're yeah. gonna make people so happy i know oh gosh you have no idea like i love making other people happy as and long the, as i keep myself happy of course what's, so like, what's the podcast idea the podcast idea um i love sleeping i also love <laughs> the reason why Me the too. reason why Me too. yeah right i love to dream like going through a dream and like you know understanding why you're dreaming about what you're dreaming and what other people are dreaming about i just think is so fascinating because i have stories about things that i've dream like dreamt about that are just like insane and it's like why am i dreaming about an apocalyptic virus thing before a pandemic even starts you know mm -hmm. so like I think that's kind of what I want to do and talk to people about the craziest dreams or maybe even the coolest dream that they've had and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think a deep dive into dreams is something that every because everyone finds it intriguing. Even those people who claim to not dream yeah. want to know about what other people are dreaming about. Mm -hmm. um, get that podcast going. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tucker's got a dream that he's been telling for years about being in Rutland and meeting up with Brent Spiner from <laughs> Star Trek: The Next Generation. That was and in Kentucky. It wasn't in. It wasn't in Rutland. But you told me about it. no, because weren't you biking through, through Rutland, Kentucky? Through Kentucky. Yeah. Oh God forbid I get one aspect hey. of his dream wrong <laughs> yeah. from so Don't many tell years the story ago. Right. Um. So also, I'm going to pitch you a documentary to watch if you haven't watched yeah. it. Okay, uh, it's called The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. Yes, we watched that. Did you watch it? Watch it? We're yes, so what good. the first documentary was, we wa feature like oh, we watched yeah. in. Yeah, it's so good. Okay, it's amazing, right? Because it's yeah. a good versus evil. And the, yeah. the fact that he's there for so many of those moments, like yeah. when when they're out there with the, the, the referee guy and then he gets called by Guinness and so they go back immediately. <laughs> It's just crazy it's, good. It's so good. And all like the animated like people and how they talk and that just uh, subculture of hey, like. Did you take a deep dive on the internet afterwards? Because there has been so much that's <laughs> yeah. happened we since did talk then. We a little bit about, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Mitchell. One yeah. of the, he's one of the yeah. great on-screen villains. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. so hissable. A buddy of mine got hired to work. They were doing a shoot. The filmmakers did a follow-up because they did a, a reunion of all the cast members when Billy was trying to recapture the score. And what's the character, Captain Awesome or something? Yeah. He was like a TV personality. <laughs> right. My buddy said yeah. he showed up and he had made Billy a, 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 a biggest douchebag in the universe award <laughs> on a plaque. And he tried to present it to him and they wouldn't let him come in. They wouldn't let him come into the recording. So a uh -huh. little inside baseball on Billy Mitchell after the fact. 
I ordered a gallon of his hot sauce, <laughs> and it's awful. It's the worst hot sauce you've ever had. Uh, so, well, okay. So, well, let me know about your dream podcast when it comes on. Okay. I will totally do that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Of Thank course. you. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to help us continue to produce new episodes each week, visit JJMeetsWorld.com, where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some swag at the merch shop, or follow our link to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the sites the cool kids are using these days. JJ Meets World is produced every week by Tucker Lucas. You can find out more about Tucker's work by visiting moonbasemaria.com. If you want to get in touch with your host with the most, check out linebenders.com where you can find direct contact info for JJ or booking information. I didn't make any notes this time either. 